Could you explain what we have here today? Please? Yeah, certainly. So we've got two drones, the red one being an XAG P20, um, a spray drone with some CFD discs on the outside for their spraying distribution, a tank base in the top there. And we've got a DJI Agris S, which is a octocopter spray drone designed to spray with its four spray nozzles around the outside base there. And um, both have the capability of carrying a 10 litre tank, which could be used for chemical distribution. Both systems have positives and negatives. Both of them run from RTK correction, which allows them to have centimetre accuracy for their positioning and operating in a set environment and they both have an ability to avoid obstacles when flying. So whilst we're on this subject then, a lot of concern is with the drift element to spray on it. In your opinions, is this a safe application in terms of drift? Is it controlled or is it...? These being agricultural drones, they're designed to particularly target areas that you want to spray. So they're designed to control within a set boundary and spray in a set zonal area that you want to actually target. Mm. From that, we're talking about drift dissemination from the base of the drone to about three to five meters, depending on the height of the drone. This is a perfect tool to actually get chemical in the set controlled area. The area of drift is probably going to be very limited to the amount beyond a set perimeter. It's probably a really good time to actually discuss the, the reason why um, this one is a standard structure with a pod rotor. Um, allowing it to have four larger um, rotors on each corner, allowing it to produce its lift. Um, these spin a little bit slower than the uh, other drone system, which has got eight rotors on it. Um, they've got different design capabilities for them to actually produce their lift and speed. They have both been designed to actually produce the least amount of turbulence, allowing that air column that is about 18 meters cubed per second to literally push down the amount of spray that has been produced from the drone system. Um, both systems actually have spray nozzles at the front and back of the drone and dependent on how you're actually trying to spray the front or rear will actually target the spray into that particular area meaning it has less um, ability to go where you don't want it to go so they're very well in that capability. Um, you've got two capabilities for um, GPS antenna on the top. If you've got these little black nozzles on the top bit there. Um, those both are um, a GPS antenna which is relating to an RTK antenna, um, which gives it its centimetre accuracy in position from horizontal, about 10 centimetres in vertical. So very precise capability of knowing where it is in the set environment. And that's limited with a set controller that is placed on site allowing you to get the accuracy. Um, both of them have got tanks. One is physically fixed to the drone system, so the DJI, the white drone, has got a tank that is physically fitted to it with a filler cap on the top where you fill the chemical in from the side. The other um, XAG drone has got a tank system that literally pulls out and then is placed back in again and is literally filled from a filling system meaning that there is no contact with any chemical at all. So in the capability of not coming into contact with anything, you don't need any special um, covering or protection to allow you to operate this drone system with dealing with the chemical. So there are some benefits of using this particular system compared to the other. However, droplet size and dissemination is obviously a very big difference between the two of them. Um, both of them are very accurate in their capability of flying to and from, and they've both got a flying time of about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how quickly you're reducing the amount of chemical inside the tank. The heavier the drone is, the least amount of time it will fly. So both of them are limited from that, but they both have a battery time long enough to allow them to distribute all the chemical from the tank at its lowest application rate. With regards to the waterproofing, what's the different IP ratings for both drones? Yeah, that's fair enough then. Um, I believe the XAG drone is um, IP67 rated, so it means you can hose it down with a non-pressurised nozzle, allowing you to wash off chemical across the entire system. Um, so that means it's very easy to wash down, you can wash over the component parts of it. Um, the DJI system is not so waterproof and it's designed to be sponged down or wet-ragged um, 
to actually get the chemical off it. And then you sort of program drain. these drones so that they follow a pattern or a route. And what happens when the chemical runs out in the, the tank? How do they know whether they can go back to the same spot? Perfect, okay. So the, the paths for, for flying both of these drone systems, they've both got different ways to actually work it out of the outer perimeter. One you walk around with a controller and one you work around with a GPS antenna. You create a pre-selected um, perimeter where the drone will not fly beyond. So that is a kind of control area allowing you to have a set control. That could be your outer boundary. And then inside that area you can break that down to numbers of squares or pixels of spray application that you can pre-program the system to fly and do a route path. That allows the drone system to fly on that set area. After it's come to the point of um, spraying and the tank is fully depleted, in both of the systems it will recognise where it emptied, will come back to its home position, wait to be refilled and then recontinue the set spraying condition at the point that it left off last time. However, these are probably fifth generation drone design systems which are designed to actually have least amount of failures in agricultural environments, so they've both been designed very well to have least amount of failures. In fact, I think there's more area that's been covered from this particular drone system across China than um, any other drone system, so very, very reliable and capable. I can imagine these systems having a very low likelihood of actually breaking down. We've yeah. been working on the background of this to work within agricultural environments for over four years to actually get where we have gone. I would say that we are the leading authority in the University of Harper Adams to actually talk about spray drones and their work within environments. And we know their positives and negatives and their challenges to actually get out there, while also working with the paperwork and the relative authorities to actually get us out there and actually mm -hmm. operating, yeah. which I believe is fully possible for us to actually have, but we just need some help. We are the only place in the UK that's actually licensed to fly drones. To spray. So in summary guys, um, to talk about um, what we've been talking about with the two drone systems here, we believe that drones can actually be utilised as one of the many tools to allow us to actually cover and spray a particular chemical over an area. It's very precise, it's very accurate and they've got the capability of adjusting different types of um, chemical um, uh, droplet sizes and that's absolutely perfect for what we require. We have the capability to actually train and teach people how to operate these drone systems and also understand the chemical control um, differences that are different from operating a drone pilot to operating a larger drone system and also doing a particular task in the environment that we're working with which is going to be more challenging than um, standard agriculture. We've also got the really exciting capabilities of actually working together with the CAA and the CRD to allow us to actually push through, especially with this pandemic that's coming across with this COVID-19, to actually showcase that this technology can really be used to actually help and save lives within this environment in the UK. And we can all work together and actually make that happen. And I think that shows really nicely of us coming here today to actually discuss all of these positive features. What sort of time frame uh, do you anticipate before you can actually get up and be training people? I reckon in reality probably two weeks and it's a real push we could probably reduce that down. It's just the help from others to actually allow us to get there. We need to actually have help from the CAA to actually push through an operational safety case. We need to have help from the CRD to actually allow the chemical control and the distribution to have an emergency release of whatever we're going to be using for the chemical to distribute and we also need some help to actually allow us to operate and fly these drone systems from the companies providing them and actually providing so much important support and resource from what they've learnt operating over in China and around the world from their particular applications. And I think working all together with that is a completely unprecedented situation where we can actually pull this together.